Hi, hello, welcome back. This is James Sarah from Workshape. Today we're going to look at um, how we can implement masters on in actual RP on our prototype. Um, masters are used to reduce the stress in terms of reduplicating the design pattern that we've created on a prototype. Uh, as you can see, masters is used for things like the header, the footer, navigation buttons that you want to make consistent on your prototype because we don't want to have different types of button different types of design every single time we create this widget so the reason why masters is used and the best practice is for us to implement masters is that it reduces our stress and it doesn't make our prototype look messy and it's very easy to manage when your prototype becomes very large with lots of pages and you have a lot of widget to deal with, if you have masters, then it's easy for you to manage each of these widget. And when you make changes, you don't have to change on every pages. You just need to change from the masters. So we can look at um, masters as a style sheet. Once we've styled a, a page or a widget is going to be consistent on every section of the prototype and uh, masters is used mainly for things like the header the footer the navigation buttons call to action and things that you know is going to be consistent on your website based on your own user requirement you're not just going to use masters for the sake of it but the reality is you're going to need masters in every prototype, whether mobile or web prototype that you create. So in this tutorial, what I'm going to show you is how to implement masters in a very simple way and how you can use it in all different pages. We're just going to pick maybe one or two pages. We're not going to develop a full blown prototype. We're just going to show um, how we can implement these masters in a very simple way. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do on every page is let's draw a widget and let's put it in on, on the page. We're going to make this 960 and I'm going to make this blue and I'm going to remove the border for this. Also on every website, we normally have a logo. So I'm just going to use a placeholder now instead of an image. I'm going to say logo so that we know it's a logo. And then I'm going to place it here. I'm going to change the font to something nicer. Yeah, so we have the logo now. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a menu. I'm going to call this menu one. On every website, we always have menu, of course, because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our user can navigate through each of the pages that we've created and they can interact with the application effectively. So I'm going to make this uh, 14 and I'm just going to make this a um, little bit here, yeah, this. So we have this now. So what we need to do is to reduplicate this into maybe four places using the control D and um, we're going to align them properly. I'm just going to name this uh, menu two, menu three, and I'm going to name this menu four. The next thing we're going to have on our page, which is normal on every website, is to have a button for call to action, maybe get started. So if user lands on your website for the first time, you want them to register, of course, because that's the main reason why they are using your product. They are not just using your product just for the sake of it. So we're just going to keep it simple for now and uh, align this properly. Let's move this up. Let's put this button here. And let's move the menu yeah so i'm going to group the menu together pressing the ctrl d or, or you know or using this option here and then yeah we're going to align this properly let's put this menu in the middle and or oh, now let's put the menu closer to this let's group this together and uh, let's make sure these are aligned properly so what we need to do now is to centralize it here. Yeah. So we have our header right now. Now this header has been created in such a way that it's very simple. It has four menu and it has a, a call to action button, which is the get started. This can lead to the login screen or the sign up screen. And also it has the logo part of the 
website as well, which every website is going to have anyway. So now how do we implement these masters and how do we make sure that the design that we've created, the part and the template that we've created here, it's going to be consistent on every page, regardless of, you know, how many pages we use this particular widget. So what we're going to do is to select everything to create a master. So you select everything. We group it together and then we right click. Once we right click, we scroll down and we select convert to masters. Once we convert to masters, it's a good practice to give all your masters a name. In fact, all your widget, whether you create a text box, you create a, a button, you create a, sh a shape, a rectangle, anything at all, your menu, your labels, you have to give it a name because it helps you to manage your prototype properly when you're making editing, especially when you have large num uh, large page of prototype and you want to manage this product or somebody else is trying to manage this prototype for you to create some maybe dynamic um, functionality. And if you don't name your widget, then it's going to be difficult for them to manage it. So it's, it's a good practice to name all your widgets that you create. Also your your masters and your dynamic panels and everything but for the point of this tutorial what we are looking at is just only um masters so we right click and then we're going to say convert to master and we give it a name as this is the header that we are creating we, it it is advisable to make it header we have it header and then we're going to say continue now once we hit continue you can see that the um, color here changes This shows that this has been created as a master the design is going to be consistent as long as it's on this page It's not going to change. We can't really make Changes here unless we go through the master by double clicking it and for for us to make changes. We have to go to um, The panel here this the the masters panel and we have the the masters that we've created which is the header to make an edit we simply go here and then we can just say let's change this to home page for example home let's say about us and let's say this is a um, product and let's say this is uh, contact contact us so now a simple website we have something like this so we've created it and we've saved this as a as our masters so if you you see now when we go back to the home page the information has been ref uh, the the information we have on the masters has been reflected on this home page so if we want to make use of this masters in another page, let's say this is the um, about us page. And let's say this is the product page. And let's say this is the contact us page. Now for us to make use of it, we can just simply copy this and paste it on each page. They all stay in the normal position that uh, the original widget is in. So what we're going to do next is to make sure that we have this information now. Now we have this master, but we don't have to create different widget for every single page. What we've just made use of is this master. So if I change this, for example, to let's say this as home page, if we go back to our home page, we see that these changes has been made. If we go back to the about us, the changes for the home page has been made. If we go back to the product page, the changes have been made. The contact us made, the changes have been made. So masters are vital for prototyping because it makes your work easier. It makes you um, not to create a lot of widget that you don't necessarily need. And also it makes your work consistent. I hope you've been able to learn something about creating masters, why they are used, and how you can simply implement them in your prototype. It's very easy to use. The only thing you need to is just right click convert to masters and you can make changes and every page you have placed that masters on, the changes you made on the masters will be reflected 
on it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any question, drop me a a comment below um, and also watch out for more short tutorials on implementation on each of the widgets and interaction that you can have in your prototype using actual RP. Um, thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.